Today is uh, January 13th, uh, 2020. My name is Blair Williams, and I'm here today in the home of Firm Landis. Is that right? That's right. All right. So, uh, Mr. Landis, uh, where, where were you, where and when were you born? I was born in Mexico, PA, 7-24-21. All right. And, uh... What was life growing up in, in Mexico or when you were when you were younger? Well, I'll tell you, you didn't have much to do. I mean, in the summertime, you played ball and swim. In the wintertime, you sled ride. Mm. I mean, that was your <laughs> amusement. Now, my, my dad... When I was a kid, he raised rabbits, and I took care of them a lot. Of, I mean, most of the time. And did you uh, did you go to a one room schoolhouse, or was it uh, a little bit bigger than that? No, that was just a, it was a a double school. Okay, I one to one to four and four to eight. Now, I remember hearing some people uh, would tell me that they would, they would be in charge of, you know, uh, like raking out coals and bringing in coal for the day for the furnace and, uh, you know, getting water for the school. Was that your experience as well? I did that. Yep. I used to take care of the, the fire and clean the erasers. And... Yeah. Now, what did, what did your uh, parents do? My dad... He worked at the uh, Standard Steel, and my mother, she worked at the American Visco. Okay. And what, what were their names? My dad's name was Raymond, and my mother's name was Ella. Okay. So, were there any, um, was there anything that really stands out to you all these years later about growing up, or... <laughs> no, not that no. I can, not really, you know. I mean, do I get to farming and then there was, you know, some... Well, did, so I know uh, you ended up uh, being a dairy farmer here in Cumberland County. Right. Did you start out uh, in Juniata or... Nope. I moved, uh, well, when I was a kid, I worked on dairy farms, okay. you know, helped them out. Mm -hmm. I mean, just working. And then uh, I moved down here. There was a lady come over. I was in the store. My brother-in-law owned the store. And I was in there, and there was a lady come in there. And uh, she was looking for somebody. Her husband died. And she was looking for somebody over here in Cumberland County. I mean, so I went home and talked to my wife. And she said, if that's what you want to do. I said, that's all I wanted to do all my life. Yeah. So I come over here, over there and worked for McMinn's for four years. But I kept my eye, I have Oata. He had 13 farms. And he had guys on them working for the half. Mm -hmm. So I finally talked them into giving me one. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got started and went from there, Darian. <laughs> so, um, what were you doing before you uh, you found yourself working on a dairy farm? Well, when I was I was where I worked at the American Visco Corporation. Okay. My mother, yeah, my mother got me a job there. So I, when when did that start? Oh God, <laughs> sixteen. I mean, that's probably. 18. 
And then, um, so you mentioned that you were you were married by the time you started farming. So how, how did you uh, meet your wife? <laughs> well, back then, when I was a kid, you know, we didn't have uh, many vehicles. Yep. And, uh, but uh, one day, a friend of mine got his mother's car. So we went over to Port Royal and there was a covered bridge. And there was three girls walking across the bridge. And I seen this redhead. And I said, buddy, there's, there's my wife. And I had a hard time getting her, but I finally got her. Yeah. <laughs> and what a woman. Man. <laughs> What was her name? Dorothy. Dorothy? Her maiden name? Fult. Fult. Okay. And then she became Dorothy Landis. Right. And when was this? When did when did you uh, ended up when did you end up meeting her? <laughs> oh God. I imagine when I was about 16 or 17, you know. Okay. So you didn't even have a full-time job there, right? Oh, no. There you were. <laughs> we were just kids then, you know. Yeah, yeah man. Did, uh, did Dorothy also grow up near Mexico, or? She was in Port Royal. Port Royal, okay. So you, yeah. so you didn't go to school together or anything like no. that? No. Well, well, you said... Uh, it was your friend's mother's vehicle, so how did you keep in touch with uh, Dorothy then? Well, we rode bicycles. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we would ride over, catch him in the bridge. <laughs> uh, how far was the, uh, the bike ride? Three miles. Okay, that wasn't too bad then. Yeah, it wasn't very bad. A few minutes. <laughs> well... What were some of your, your early dates then with uh, Dorothy? Which one? What were some of your early dates with Dorothy? Like just hanging out at the covered bridge or? Oh, no. I mean, if uh, my friend could get his car. Yeah. We'd go to the movies. We'd go to the Pastime Theater in Lewistown. Okay. 15 cents. Because <laughs> <laughs> we didn't make much money back there. Yeah. Well, so I, I know you found yourself uh, in Cumberland County uh, working on the dairy farm. Did you, at that point, did you move down here with Dorothy or? Yes, yes, we did. Okay. Was this before or after the war? No, that was, this was after the war. After the war, okay. Well, let's go back to the, the war. So you're still working at was it American Vista or? Before the war. Yeah. I was working at the Visco. American Visco. Visco. American Visco. Yeah. Um, and then did you end up being drafted or? Right. Okay. So what, what was that experience like? Well, like I said, I brought him home from the hospital. Your son, Don? Yeah. Left the next day. Okay. And uh, it was quite an experience. Because I tried to get deferred, you know. Yep. Nope. You can forget you're in the service now. So this would have been uh, 1942? 19, yeah, 1942. Okay. How long has you been married at this point? Oh, just about a year. Okay. I was trying to imagine my wife, if I... I left the day after we had a, we had a child. I don't think she'd be too happy. So I can understand what you meant by, you know, your wife being quite the woman. She <laughs> was. Been tough. So, so you're pro you were processed in New Cumberland or Harrisburg? What? Where, where were you processed? New Cumberland or Harrisburg? New Cumberland. Okay. And then where did, where did you go after New Cumberland? Uh. Camp Wheeler, Georgia. For uh, basic training? Basic training. And then we went from there, we went to St. Augustine, Florida, 
for military police training. How did you find yourself in the military police? Were, was that a, your choice, oh, or were you? No, just, that, that, you were drafted. You were just picked out. <laughs> <laughs> just at random, then. Right. Okay. Random. Um. So, what was military police training like? Oh, it was just. <laughs> I guess more like police work because I mean the army the army was a little different because I mean you were out there you paraded once a day not too far but uh, you uh, learned well town patrol I mean you know you went with the experienced guy and done the Town patrol, and uh, oh, I mean, it was it was fun. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was a. You got in when we first started. When you first went downtown, we had the wax were stationed in Daytona. And it wasn't too far, I don't know how many miles it was, but it wasn't too far. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of wax come over to St. Augustine. The wax are? They were army. Okay. They were the wax, the, the, the army wax. And, uh, you know, they would get, well, they'd get drunk, you know. And they'd go in a bar, you know, and I mean, as soon as you walked in a bar, I mean, you can figure trouble was going to start. So finally, I mean, we just started it. We didn't go in. Mm -hmm. If the uh, bartender shook his head up and everything was okay, we just kept on going. How long were you uh, in St. Augustine? Let's see. We left there in April. We were six weeks and we left the uh, we were there three months in uh, St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. And from, from St. Augustine, where did you end up after that? Well, when we took off, I mean, they had sealed orders. And when they opened them, there was a Battalion, five companies that was there in St. Augustine. They all left at the same time. All had to go different places. Well, according to them, we were supposed to go to North Africa. But we sat in Minnesota. We sat uh, five days, five days and six nights or something like that till they figured out where we were going to go. They must have had a good idea where we was going because we were there at Minnesota. And we just went across the border then. And we went to... Uh, uh, well, then they got their orders. I mean, were changed that the Japs left. So we just went to uh, uh, Port Edwards, British Columbia. Hmm. And we got there about 11 o'clock one night and they dumped us off. One barracks, 175 guys, stuck us in one barracks. No, no hot water, 
I mean, there was a, you know, we had heat because we had the fire room, had them in old pot belly stairs. <laughs> so we, we could fire it, but we took a shower. I mean, it was about three months. We took a shower in cold water. And muskeg, you can be, I mean, it was all muskeg, the ground. And they had, when we first went there, they had built the, uh, the roads. They were just ramps. I mean, two before. And I mean, they were about two feet wide. And you drove over, or if you didn't, you were in the muskeg. But anyway, that's the way it started. And then... Uh, the engineers were there working. I mean, they had one barracks uh, finished. And, but then they, they were building the, the uh, ammunition. Uh, they had the magazines. They had the magazines, a lot of them built, because they had Stewards. I mean, somebody was there and had uh, ammunition stored in these bunkers, and uh, it uh, it wasn't long till they got the uh, out to the, where they could load ships, and then they started loading ships. I think you were telling me earlier that I mean they were basically loading like one ship a day. Yep. Yep, when they when they got started, yep, and they were all brand new. They were either a victory ship or a liberty ship, brand splinter new. And the, these are different sizes, classes of ship. Yeah, the one was built down at Sun Ship, and the other one Kaiser built. Okay. And so you were just loading them all day with ammunition, ammunition. No, I stuff. didn't. You, I mean, how I done, we guarded. Uh, you guarded the sheds. Right. Didn't see it. Nobody got on the, the dock, you know, that wasn't supposed to be there. But they, them guys that loaded them ships, <laughs> they had cranes, you know, and they, these, they had this ammunition, they were on pallets. Mm -hmm. And they loaded that pallet for them shells, put them on the ship. And every now and then, one would drop. Now, I mean, it was phosphorus. Most of the time, it was phosphorus, and all they'd done was just throw it overboard. Mm -hmm. And then they had divers that would go down there and get them, I guess, or whether they just left them lay down there. But anyway, but we guarded bridges, you know, that come into the place. And uh, but that was our job, guarding all the time. Were there any... Uh Instances where you where you had some trouble, or was it pretty you know pretty boring just the entire time? <laughs> no, we didn't have any. We never had any problems. Only with the Indians. Okay. They had a uh, submarine deck, and they had a place for these Indians because there was a uh, fishery hmm. where they come in to bring their fish in, and some of them guys. And they were Indians, you know, didn't know any better. And they uh, forgot to signal that who they were coming in. And some of the guys got a little free with the ammunition. Started shooting these boats, you know. Mm -hmm. But other than that, why? Well, I think before we started uh, filming, you also mentioned that it, 
you know, they told you that this was pretty dangerous. If you ever got attacked, you wouldn't have to worry about it. That's right. They told us, you wouldn't need to ever worry because they won't find a piece of you. Yeah. It was four square miles what it was. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many ma magazines that was on there. And I was, they all had ammunition because sometimes they didn't un took some out of there. But uh, most of the time, they had enough of trains coming in there that they, we had, I seen three, three full trains ammunition mm -hmm. sitting there waiting to get loaded. Did they just figure that, you know, it was so far out of the way that you're, you're pretty safe, or...? Well, I guess they figured that was, you know, I mean... They, they could get their ammunition there mm -hmm. from there pretty quick, you know. And then if they went into Japan, I mean, that was where they would go, you know. And uh, that's where we went because we were we were booked to go into Japan. But you didn't end up going, or no, nope, never or? didn't go. No, I mean when the uh, when the Japs surrendered, that there. That their port just closed down like that. Yeah. And they transferred us in to the mainland, Prince Rupert, Canada. And that was a subport of Seattle, Washington. Okay. And, uh, oh my, they just had, you couldn't believe the, the uh, stuff that they had in warehouses, like sugar. I mean, just from here out to the end of the drive, before you went down the hill, well, oh, it was probably longer than that. But just loaded with sugar and stuff that they were shipping out. Then when they would bring something new in, they wouldn't use the stuff that was there. They'd just power and talk. Uh, that sugar probably the, was on the bottom was so hard you you'd have had to take a sledgehammer to. Yeah. But uh, so you spent three years in uh, in sort of on Prince Edward Island there. Uh, three years. Yeah. So were you able to maintain a, a correspondence back with your family and your wife? Oh yeah, but I mean it was. Uh, It, what do they call it? I mean, you, they didn't know where you had to, you had a serial number where you, sure. your address was, uh, oh, what do they call it? But anyway, they didn't know where you were. Uh, okay. And you, you probably, you weren't allowed to, to say where you were? Or oh, no. Classified? No. So were you, were you getting updates on your son, sort of his early years? Oh, yeah, I wrote back and forth all the time. Yeah, we kept correspondence, you know. Yep. Did you get pictures or anything like that? Oh, I imagine there's some around here someplace. Yeah. Do you still have those letters, or? Oh, no. No. So, uh, so after Prince Edward Island, you, you uh, you're shipped down to, uh, just outside Seattle. Was it, uh, Port Rupert? Prince Rupert. Prince Rupert, okay. Um, and how long were you there for? We weren't there too long because, uh, they just started to discharge. People had service, mm -hmm. you know, had service, but we were ready to go, 
and uh, there was uh, three of us. And we were ready to go, I think, the next day. And they, they canceled ours because they were sending the old men home. The 40-year-olds that yeah. was in, you know. There was a lot, good many 40-year-olds that they had drafted. So how long did you end up uh, staying uh, in the I was army? in the Army three years and six months. Okay. So it wasn't too much longer than after you got sent down. So when did you finally make it back to, uh, I guess? I just joined 1945. Okay. And then then you, you made your way back to Port Royal or Mexico? Yep. Yeah. Then... Uh, it was only a couple months till we moved over here. Okay. That, that, that's one of the scary farming opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I went to work back to the Visco, and man, that was terrible. I just, inside, you couldn't, uh, cooped up. And it's for, it's for after all those yeah, months and years on uh, British <laughs> Columbia. Imagine it was quite the difference. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean you were you were active there, you know. You spent when you were on duty. You probably you spent four on, eight off. Okay. Four on, eight off. Now hours. Four hours. <laughs> yeah, four hours on, eight hours off. That's the way you worked. Yeah. Yeah, so, so was it a readjustment coming back to... <laughs> no, I mean... You know, do we... Got adjusted, got a place to live. We... Uh, Rented for a while, and then we bought a place, and then uh, we decided I, like I say, that lady come over. And we went. We moved to Cumberland County. Okay. Now, uh, maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but. Uh, I think someone was telling me that your son didn't recognize you when you came back. <laughs> and that he, he, he didn't want to take a, you were telling him to do something. You, you know, he didn't, no, he, he kept telling me, you're not my boss. Yeah? Does he still <laughs> tell you that? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. Did I? <laughs> yeah. So, we were just saying, so, uh, so your son's learned that you are the boss now. <laughs> it, it took him a couple of years, but... No, it didn't take him that long. Because, I mean, uh, he would shake his fist at me. Really? And I told him, one of these days, you're going to shake it one too many times. <laughs> and that's what happened. Hmm. And I... I hit him pretty hard. Harder than I should have. Yeah. But he didn't shake his fist after that. <laughs> you learn quickly. Well, when you're five years old, you know. Yeah. So, you, you, you mentioned that you bought a house, but this was before you came to Cumberland County. So, did right. you have to then uh, right. buy again when you moved down here? No. They furnished the house when okay. we come down here. Now, now, where was this farm located? Right up here. You know, what's that? You old York Road, isn't it? McMahon's? Yeah. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> the old York Road? Yeah, I, I drove. I drove on it on my way here. Yeah. Well, when you come down the road, there's a farm. You see the silo there, it had a sign on if you recognized it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they tore the barn down, but uh, he left the silo 
in memory of his son. His son got caught in a storage wagon there. Mm. I mean, the people that live there now. Mm. But that's where I started, right? Right there. Just before, or... Uh, Coyle's lumber is right after. Yeah, when you... you right after you pass Coyle's. Or before you get to Coyle's. Okay. All right, so you were at... Uh, I was there four years. McMinn's Farm. Yep. Four years. And then um, you found another opportunity. Well... I mean, there's, she had a son, and he took over the farm. Okay. So, he didn't need me, but anyway, I didn't have a job to go to. So, I got a job, Doc Hikus, down at Dillsburg for one year. Well, I quit in January. I mean, he, he had five, he had six. Hogs. I mean, they were sows, mm. and they were bred to have pigs. He had this one, no place to have her pigs. <laughs> so we fixed them up in the yard. We put a, built a, made a pretty good pen, you know, put a light in it. She had 14 pigs. And we didn't lose a pig. But he just raised the devil. He said, you're going to pay the light bill. He paid the light bill. I said, what do you mean? Why, he said, look at this. And I forget how much it was, but it was, it must have been a good bit over what he was paying. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that was it right there. We had an argument and I said, I'll be leaving in the spring. And that's when I got the job with the autos, and that's when I I worked there on 50-50. Mm -hmm. I mean, he owned the cows, and I owned the machinery. And then, but you got the cows, you worked your way into the cows. Mm -hmm. I mean, and... Uh, so that's how I got my cows. I mean, they, he uh, made a mistake when he made the contract. He had in there, if you s sell the cow, dog, call cow to market, you had a replacer if you took the money. But I was smart enough not to take the money. So I didn't have to replace the cow. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I had, uh, in five years, do you remember how, remember how many we had gone? But we had all the, half the heifers, and uh, it was uh, nine or ten cows. So, I mean, I, I just stayed there. I mean, he just gave up. Uh, he didn't want in the partnership business anymore. Yeah. So. But then he gave the farms to the college. He had them up for sale. And uh, he wanted 103000 and I went into the, the um, Farmers Association, and they wouldn't give me the money, because that was too much money. And then I went to the Veterans Administration, and uh, they, would, they wouldn't give me that much money either. So, and then in the meantime, he, there's a, over there where the Bunny Brook Quarries is, mm -hmm. them farms, he sold them. He owned them and he sold them to the quarry. 
and he was going to have to give one of them to the government. So he decided to give one away. So he gave the one where I was, he gave them away. Now Dickerson College has them. He gave them to Dickerson College. Is this where the, the solar farm is now, or the solar panels are? Or? No, no. They're coming right out of Boiling Springs. Dickinson College has an organic farm. Okay. They're, they, farm it, they farm it themselves. Yeah. Dickinson. I, I think one of the people that lives in my apartment building actually works on Works on it. Yeah. So then... Uh, I think Don was saying this was uh, 1965. 65 is when you and I both had sailed with the cows. Yeah. Yeah, that's when we split up. And then I started myself. Well, you mentioned earlier that uh, he, he made a mistake in the contract that if you sold the cows at market and you didn't take the money, you didn't have to replace the cow. The call cow. Call cow. Call the one that wouldn't milk anymore. Didn't give any milk anymore. Okay. And we sent her to market. Mm -hmm. So so instead of taking the money, you just took the, the meat or no? I didn't take nothing. So I didn't have to replace her. Okay. So that made that give me another cow, half a cow. We wanted. When we uh, settled up. Okay. So if he didn't take the money, he got half, he would have another half. He'd yeah. be yeah. have another half interest in one of the cows. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, how many times did that end up happening? Well, I mean, you'd have a good, you'd have a cow call cow. I mean, why don't we do? I don't know how many. But but you ended up uh, acquiring an interest in interest in yeah, oh well, yeah. Yep. By the time you by the time you settled up in yep. sixty five. So you, you mentioned that you went into to business for yourself, basically. Now wh where was this at? Right there. On the on the farm. Yep. Until until Dickinson College got it. Yep, when they got it. Yeah, they, what year did they get that done? I'm not sure, Dad. Anyway, was, I farmed for them for, oh, God. I don't know how many, I mean, I don't know how many years, but they, they treated me okay. Yeah. I just, I farmed there until I decided to quit. Well, you, you, I think you mentioned to me uh, earlier that you had fought, that you were, uh, you farmed for about 40 years. So I, that's, that's quite a long time to. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing this would have been around 85 to 1990, thereabouts. It was a little eighty five when we gave up. Uh, I believe. Yeah. 85, 86, 85. Somewhere in there. Yeah, eighty is when I quit. Okay. But anyway, we had some real cows. Yeah. Yep, we had the high cow for butter fat one year for the county. For a couple of years. Really? And then we had milk. Uh, high cow one year for milk, and she had 100 and. God, I forget exactly. She milked, the highest she milked was. Uh, 131 pounds a day. Wow. <laughs> now, 
Now, did you did you have agreements with um, any of the, the local dairies, or or how, how did your what did oh. you end up doing with the, the milk that? Oh you know, yeah, we sold uh, we harvest and dairy. We had uh, sold our milk to harvest and dairy. Then they went out of business, and then uh, we uh, uh, we went over here and on New York Road. <laughs> Good God, my memory's going. It's going for me too, and I'm a lot younger. So, <laughs> oh shit. So I, 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 the dairy that always stands out to me, you know, doing a lot of these interviews was Kruger, but that was that was before you got. Yeah, I never sold the Krugers. Yeah, but they they had a dairy, you know. But but none of these were like cooperatives or anything like that. Yeah, what's this in down here, Don? Down. New York Road. Rutgers. No. no. Going in right across from the Pittsburgh plate. Oh, <laughs> Holly. Huh? Uh, lakes, uh, yeah. Land of Lakes. Land of Lake. Okay. Yeah, we sold to them for quite a while. Was it, and then... Your, like grade A milk for uh, the milk that you're producing was it you know grade A for for drinking or they turned well, into cheese or anything like that or? well I don't know what they done with it but with it, it was uh, sold as grade A milk you right. know yeah but they they probably you know uh, they make butter now yeah. I think they make cheese and Dry milk, I mean, they make everything up. But, but they paid you for, for grade A. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I know there's there, there tends to be a difference in terms of, of what you get depending on the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys today, I don't know how they make a living. Mm -hmm. They're not getting much more than we did. Mm. I'll bet you they're not getting much more than $18 right now. And we got $15. Yeah, and inflation and all that, too. <laughs> but, and then, so that's 18 per 100 weight, or? Yeah, yeah. Or 15 per 100 No, $15 weight. for 100 weight. So you mentioned you, you had a you had one cow in particular who um, was producing 131 gallons a day at her at her peak. Pound, pound, pound. I'm sorry. And then there was another one who had the highest butter fat. That was for the herd. For the herd. And I had, I think I had I think I had I think I had a cow. I don't know. Got probably have to get all that stuff out. <laughs> Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, so were there any years or other, other things that stand out, you know, from your, from your days as a farmer, or years that were particularly good, or particularly bad? <laughs> we had lots of bad years. Yeah. When you had them drought years, you know. Did you mainly uh, graze the cows, or were they, or did you have to do a lot of, you know, the, you know, corn and all that? You know, I mean, we raised all that. Yeah. I mean, one year we had a drought. Corn grew about like that. Oh, we had we had to buy a lot of corn, a lot of feed. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you rotate crops so uh, like corn, soy, alfalfa, or corn, and oats, and wheat? Okay. I didn't. I didn't uh, grow any beans till the last year. I think it, maybe the last two years. I raised some beans. No alfalfa though. Or? Oh yeah, alfalfa. 
Yeah. Was uh the the county or uh, the uh, the ag office? Did they ever come out and provide like assistance or anything like that, or tell you you know the the latest? Oh, <laughs> they come out. You know, we lived there along the creek. Yeah. And uh, they were going to fine us a dollar a day unless we stopped the water from going in the, okay. the yellow breaches. So we had to put in diversion ditches. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, it was, we knew it was coming, you know, because they kept bugging us and bugging us. But they weren't providing, you know, like, the, the latest research on... Well, they did that. I mean, they paid most of the money to put them diversion ditches. Oh, okay. Um, so, so what did you find yourself doing after you uh, retired from farming? I just fooled around. Help farmers out to milk cows. Yeah. If they wanted to go away. Just got hurt or something. So it's kind of full circle back in your early days as a teenager. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Farms. Well, I wasn't tied down. Yeah. I just do it, you know, for a couple days. Or sure. Well, um... I think one of the, the reasons that um, your name came to me was because uh, you help out uh, Pat Murphy, or maybe Pat Murphy helped you out taking care of uh, Tower Clock and Boyle. Oh, yes. Yeah. 20 years. Yeah. How, how did you find yourself doing that? Oh, well, I, I belonged to the VFW, mm -hmm. and the VFW took care of it. At that time, I mean, they didn't own it. Now... The VFW owns that ground, and they made it into a, well, a park. I mean, it's a it's a park now because uh, they can spend more money mm -hmm. being a park, and they can buy just owning it. You know. And so. Uh did you so then did you volunteer to, to help? Oh yeah. Or, or it was all of, volu it was all volunteer. Well I didn't know if it was kind of oh yeah, uh, you know, firm will will take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> you kinda of got volunteered yeah. quotes. <laughs> or if it was something that you actually wanted to do. No, that night down there we just we just took care of it. I mean We took care of everything, you know, yeah. the, the shrubbery and everything. We Memorial Day when we got ready for the parade, why we dressed her up a little. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't too much work. Yeah. Was it a lot of work or was no. it pretty easy? It was not, most of the work was mowing. That was the hardest part. Yeah. Because it's all banked. And they're just about like that, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah push mower. Yeah. Hmm. But now, now you've retired from that too. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, re I'm retired for about everything right now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you still go to the VFW or? Friday nights we get down for for a meal. Okay. Catch up with everyone. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it's the only time I go anymore. Yeah. Well, I go to the meetings. Uh, we had a meeting tonight, but I didn't. I'm not going. Hmm. I just don't feel up to it yet. Yeah. Were there any other projects? Um, you know, with the VFW that you that you did or were in charge of, aside from he's a past commander. <clears throat> past commander. Oh yeah. Is that was that another thing that just kind of <clears throat> fell into your lap, or? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, VFW. 
I mean, at that time, we had about 150 members. There's about seven come to meet. Six, and it, no, you're not and it took seven to make a form. Yeah. So you were picked. <laughs> you, yeah, I was... Uh, say six years. Wow. Pat, he was 30 years for <laughs> quartermaster. Huh. I'll uh, remember that. that were, were you involved in any other organizations locally or just the VFW? VFW. I'm trying, trying to think so I mean because we're, we're close to I guess we're pretty close to the village of Boiling Springs from where we are so yeah but I mean we're not that close either so no I we're it's well, three mile at the most okay so it's just like uh, the bike rides at Port Royal yeah oh yeah it would be a short ride down here. Now, uh, did, uh, did Dorothy work or did she, did she stay at home? She worked. Okay. And she you? worked at home and she worked away. Okay. Yeah, she worked at, uh, <laughs> Coil Electronics. Coral, yeah, Coral Spectronics. But anyway, but she worked. We had uh, 700 when we first took over the farm down there. They had 700 chickens. And we took it. We didn't. She did. Yeah. She took care of the chickens. And uh, after Dawn left, I mean, she helped milk. She milked in the evening. She didn't milk in the morning. I see him out in the evening. Thirteen room house. She took care of that house. Three meals a day. Yeah. She was that's like I started to say she was quite a woman. Yeah. I mean to tell you. You just don't find many like her. Yeah, then she went to work at Coil, too, so she's, she's busy. She didn't work there. Uh, they, uh, somebody bought them out, mm -hmm. and uh, she quit. After they bought them out, I don't know what happened. It's, uh, she quit, or they got laid off, you know, yeah. but anyway, she had plenty to do at home. Was she involved in any organizations around town? Well, she was a auxiliary member of the VFW yeah. and the ladies of the uh, farmers, ladies auxiliary, and uh, yeah, she was really involved. Did you, did you go back to Port Royal or Mexico to visit family and stuff like that too? Or? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. They're just about all going now over there. I don't have much reason to go back now. Don't have... Well... When we were going over, I mean, uh, that's family was over there and uh, her brothers or uh, her sisters and I could say her brother ran the store and uh, we had reasons to go to go over and we went over and 
we were over between Malkins. Well, he lived in Bedford, and we used to go out there between Malkins. Wow. They don't always tell me that, uh, well, yeah, when he was in Bedford, he traveled 200 miles a day. <laughs> That's when he was breeding cows. Yeah. It's quite, yeah. It's a little bit easier, I guess, <laughs> getting away between Malkins. Yeah. All right. Well, I always, I always ask, you know, if there's anything that I should have asked or that you want to mention before we stop the interview. I can say I know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Landis, for uh, allowing me to come into your home and, and talk with you. It, it's been a real pleasure. You didn't. You didn't get much that was worth much. <laughs> That's not true at all. So. <laughs>